Our Father Cares, a daily YouTube devotional with Christian Bredahl and the Shepherd's Call team. Join us for today's devotional thought. Friends, countrymen, brothers and sisters, welcome to our last devotional of 2014. I have enjoyed our time together. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Many of you wrote in and said that, yes, these have been a blessing to you. They've been a blessing to uh, your family, your children, even some schools are using them, different things, uh, different places, different uh, institutions. And, and friends, we would love to continue, but I'm going to let you into a little bit of a secret. Well, I guess it won't be so much of a secret after this. Uh, we actually were praying about, we're not sure what's going to happen, but we're praying about in 2015, the ministry might have to be relocating. And that would interrupt production for a better part of three to four months, maybe even longer. So we didn't want to start something that we couldn't finish. And that's really where it, what it's boiling down to. It's not too hard. It's not too much to be doing this each day uh, with you and for you. Uh, and it just blesses my soul and my family's soul as well uh, as we do it. Uh, it's not a matter of that. It actually is. And I just couldn't say this before because we're, we weren't sure and we're still not 100% sure. But here's something I'd like you to pray about. Um, myself and Steve Wahlberg. Now, Steve Wahlberg is a friend of mine, a brother in the faith, and he runs White Horse Media. And they have been asked me to be a co-host on a brand new news program from a Christian standpoint called World News and the Bible. And what we want to do is not only um, shoot every week and have a Bible commentary on what is happening that week, so it'll be a weekly program, but based on world news with a Christian commentary. And uh, not only do we want that to be on every single Christian network we can possibly have, but we want it to be on regular worldly networks as well. So we want to buy airtime. This is a multi-million dollar ministry project huge, way bigger than anything I've ever been a part of. And it would require us relocating to the Pacific Northwest up in the Idaho area to be able to do this weekly program. It wouldn't be feasible for me to fly every single week and be there for a couple of days and then come back for a couple of days and go. It just wouldn't make sense. And so not only would that be bad on the family, it's bad for my ear to fly that much. I'm not supposed to fly, blah, blah, blah. So you get the idea. So the main reason that we've decided to hold off for 2015 for the devotional is because we might actually be relocating. So keep that in your prayers. If it is what God wants, we're happy to go. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work. We don't want to go. We, we, I mean, in the sense of leave the studio that we have here. But people say, well, why would you leave? Because God has told us not to plant roots, but rather to be like, uh, you know, the people of the past where uh, you would take and they would move and they would even take their tents and they take everything and go from place to place. And maybe this is a move we need to make. We're praying about it. We want to see what God has in store. So we have a couple fleeces that we've laid out. And if you know the story of the fleece where we, you know, they were saying, Lord, please, if, there, if there's dew on this, I'm going to, uh, I'll do this. And then uh, there was dew on it. Okay, well, if there's dew on the ground and not on this, then I'll do that. Oh, wow, there's, it happened again. So we've laid out a couple of fleeces. And should the Lord answer our prayers, then we'll know that we're supposed to go. So here's what's up. We're going to have some, perhaps some very exciting projects and things happening. And we don't want to be uh, not able to fulfill our commitment to uh, produce these for the whole year for you. So that's why the decision has been made. We're, we're, we're anticipating it's going to go that way. So keep us in your prayers. Now, let's have a word of prayer, our last word of prayer together for 2014. Oh, Father in heaven, I just can't believe that this, this year has gone so fast. And we have spent... Uh, over 200 programs together, 230, 240, or 50 programs together. And Lord, I know that this time has not been in vain because we have been in your word and in your inspired words. Lord, we just ask that you would please let all of these seeds that have been planted over this past year take root. May they germinate and take root in our hearts. We ask that you would bless us now as we, um, as we read these words, the last page together. In Jesus' name, we beg for the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Here we are. 
our Savior's highest honor. I did not look ahead. Our Savior's highest honor. Zechariah 13, 6. And one shall say unto him that these wounds, what are, excuse me, and one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, those which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. In other words, my friends did this to me. My brothers and sisters did this to me. The pastors and the sinners, they did this to me. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, by the way, is my favorite. Anytime I sign my name, some people ask me to sign their names on my albums or whatever, I always put Revelation 21. The fire that consumes the wicked purifies the earth. Every trace of the curse is swept away. One remi reminder alone remains. The Redeemer will ever bear the marks of His crucifixion. Upon that wounded head, upon His side, His hands and feet are the only traces of the cruel work that sin has wrought. Says the prophet, beholding Christ in His glory, He had bright beams coming out of His side, and there was the hiding of His power. Habakkuk 3, 4. That pierced side whence flowed the crimson stream that reconciled man to God. There is the Savior's glory. There, the hiding of His power. And the tokens of its humiliation are His highest honor. Through the eternal ages, the wounds of Calvary will show forth His praise and declare His power. So it's by, this is amazing to me, friends. Think about this. It's not His throne. It's not the crowns. It's, it's the scars that are His highest honor. What a humble creator. The cross of Christ will be the science and the song of the redeemed through all eternity. The science and the song. So in other words, there's going to be a, an analytical trying to figure it out, but there's also going to be a creative experience of song. So it, it really appeals to both sides of the brain is what this is saying to me. In Christ glorified, they will behold Christ crucified. Never will it be forgotten that he whose power created and upheld the unnumbered worlds through that vast realm of space, the beloved of God, the majesty of heaven, he whom cherub and shining seraph delight to adore, humbled himself to uplift fallen man, that he bore the guilt and shame of sin and the hiding of his father's faith, face till the woes of a lost world broke his heart and crushed out his life on Calvary's cross. That is an amazing sentence. The maker of all the worlds, the arbiter of all destinies, should lay aside his glory and humiliate himself from love to man will ever excite the wonder and adoration of the universe. I want to reread that sentence. That the maker of all the worlds, the arbiter of all destinies, should lay aside his glory and humiliate himself from love to man will ever excite and wonder adoration the wonder me, will ever excite the wonder and adoration of the universe i knew i was reading that wrong as the nations of the saved looked upon their redeemer and behold the glory of the father shining in his countenance as they behold his throne from which is everlasting to everlasting and know that his kingdom is to have no end they break forth in rapturous song, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain and hath redeemed us to God by His own precious blood. Friends, Jesus is coming soon. And even though we're not going to meet each day now, I want to encourage you to meet with the one it's most important to meet with, and His name is Jesus Christ. Spend time with Him in His Word. By the way, in 2015, the chosen uh, spirit of prophecy uh, daily devotional is Maranatha, the Lord is coming. That's the one that we were going to do with you. And I want to encourage you, get into Maranatha, the Lord is coming. And go through that. In fact, in our personal staff daily devotional, 
uh, that we have every morning for the staff before we start our work. We've been going through that this past year. So we've been doing two devotionals every day, and it's been a blessing, not a burden. I want to encourage you, my friends, stay in the Word of God. It's life unto life. Stay in your daily devotionals. It gives you that, that, the crumbs of bread, if you will, maybe the little bit of, of the, the crust of the bread. But don't forsake eating that whole loaf. I am the Word. I am the bread. And he's saying, and I am the life. So I want to encourage you, stay in the Word of God. Stay praying. And stay being a blessing to those around you. And friends, as we draw this year now to a close, I want to encourage you to, to, to make a change, make a decision that 2015 will be the best spiritual year of your life, that you're, you're not going to take a mediocre uh, ex- existence any longer. You're going to say, no, I want to improve. I want to grow, and the only way I can do that is if I get I out of, the, out of this equation and put Jesus in. Amen? We can draw closer to Jesus than ever before by making a choice and then take action on that choice. Friends, I want to tell you this. I love you. I love you from the depths of my heart, but I have a corrupt heart. Jesus loves you from His uncorrupted heart, and He loves us so much that He will give us everything that we need to understand the will of the Father. Why? because our Father cares. God bless you, and we'll see you in the future.